most modern city of Central Africa is the capital of Kenya, one of the new nations. A modern nation, yet which contains one of the world's last great wilderness preserves. Kenya's colonial past is recalled in a memorial to the African rifles who fought for the Allies in World War I. Its unique presence is embodied in the Safari Club, Africa's most luxurious hotel, where facilities and accommodations rival the great resorts of the world, where a haughty peacock adds an exotic decor enticing his unpretentious hen. Yet this up-to-date comfort and splendor stands only a few miles from the veldt, where life throbs with a rhythm from the dawn of time. The great parks are watched over by game wardens who patrol the thousands of square miles to protect the land and its wildlife from exploitation. Every vestige of civilization recedes, and in the bush, nature takes control. Predators and grazers live in a harsh harmony in which the fleet, the powerful, and the savage survive, while the aged and the weak are swiftly eliminated. Here, indeed, the clawed power of the lion rules. Except over a few, when you stand 12 feet high and weigh up to eight tons, you usually get the right of way. But for all of its bulk, the elephant is really a timid creature. The herds of Africa are dwindling as this last wild continent is brought under civilization. But in Kenya's national park, a prosperous herd still dominates, as a marabou stork learns. Second largest of the Earth's mammals, the rhinoceros. They are grazing beasts considered exceptionally dangerous but accept a warden to the fellowship of the Velt. The Velt teams with variety. The Cape Buffalo, which is quick-tempered and dangerous, a sportsman's prize. The ostrich, which can outrun a horse, plays among the graceful impala, which can clear 40 feet in a single leap. And the elam, the giants of the antelopes, which weigh up to three-quarter tons. In nature's law, the cheetah, a cat which can outrun any other animal, lives chiefly on the fleet Thompson's gazelle. For animals which graze, like the zebra, a relative of the horse, forage on the wild belt is limited. But the lion controls the number of zebras, as the number of zebras dictates how many lions can survive on the belt. A full-grown lion can devour 150 pounds of meat in a meal. The rule of nature is neither cruel nor kind. It is strictly fair, but the balance of nature is delicate. protectors with their families are stationed within the park and enjoy a friendly but not too intimate relation with charges like this crowned crane which breakfasts on a porch each morning but still lives in the wild. Looking every inch the king of beasts he patrols his domain. But this fellow was raised in captivity. He performed in the movie Born Free, as did his mate. Yet they have been successfully returned to the wild state, except for an abiding affection for man. These lions have just made a kill and their tameness is part satisfied hunger, part thirst, and part just friendship. But the call of the 
the wild prevailed. Lions are not polite, but it is difficult to tell some where to get off. In Kenya, there is no plan to tame the wilderness and hope that the wilderness will find ways to tolerate man. For there are wild people on the veldt also. The magnificent Maasai, cattle herders as brave and as untamed as the lion. So far, they have rejected the modern world, preferring to keep ancient ways. Attempts have been made to introduce herd management, new diets, and to bring them into the political life of Kenya. So far, they have rejected all. Like the elephant and the lion, they remain part of the wild spectacle of the veldt. Mount Kilimanjaro, a climb to the peak, is one of the greatest adventures of those who come to Central Africa. The trek is through hundreds of miles of veldt and forest, and the climb is arduous. Over 19,000 feet to the summit amidst glaciers that lie only a few miles from the equator. The peak is symbolic of wild Africa surrounded by encroaching civilization. As the mountain preserves its contrast, it is hoped that men will preserve the wild and vivid belt.